Good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you all to this, um, this occasion. Uh, but first, uh, could everybody please stand while we sing the national anthem? This wall honors the courageous men and women of this agency who've given their lives so our vital mission could continue forward. We know today, as has been true in the past, that we work at a particularly fragile time and in parts of the world that are challenging and difficult. Earlier today, we joined some of our colleagues at the Department of State uh, with Vice President Biden and Secretary Kerry to pay tribute to the memory of Anne Svetinghoff, a 25-year-old Foreign Service officer who died in a car bomb attack while delivering books to a school in Afghanistan just a few months ago. And a few months back, we were right here where we placed a new plaque on this wall behind me for Rege Abdel Fattah, right there. And Rege's sons placed that plaque on the wall 
Um, and as for our whole agency, that was both a difficult moment and also a, a moment to respect the pride and admiration uh, that those two young boys had for their father, who was doing his best to make the world a better place and taking deep personal risks every moment so that we could be safer, more secure, and more prosperous right here at home. These are amongst the most difficult moments we have as a USA family together. Today we come together to continue that proud tradition and to honor two USA Foreign Service officers who died decades apart in entirely different parts of the world and in different points in our history. Eugene was a chemical engineer with a talent for languages. He spoke more languages than I think I can pronounce the names of. He spoke 13 languages, including Latin, Americ, and Tagalog. And also Chinese, as Hope will tell us. Uh, I enjoyed meeting with his uh, wonderful, energetic, and proud family and learning of their service as a family together in South Korea immediately after a war. Uh, today our president and our country and members of this agency fondly and often describe the investments and activities that we've made in that period of time as leading to lasting uh, economic prosperity for the people of South Korea, but also of creating real jobs and economic opportunities right here at home. Those efforts, I know Eugene was particularly involved in helping to establish or allow for some of the companies that had been destroyed there to reestablish themselves. And today they are some of the most prominent uh, organizations, companies, scientific institutes, universities, anywhere in the world. And if you go to South Korea today, they recall with incredible fondness the efforts of our team in that time and they have an abiding and lasting connection to this agency and to our country for our willingness to take those risks and step in in those moments. Eugene worked as a Chinese translator for the Navy Department, nurtured local businesses as a private enterprise officer in Addis Ababa and helped bring his chemical engineering background to research institutes and companies in South Korea. Even as his mission took him around the world, he remained a dedicated father to his children, uh, many, all of whom, I believe, grew up with their father's sense of service, and many uh, were with him at different posts, some even being born abroad. It's the same spirit that Dale Gretler carried out years, years later, as a Peace Corps volunteer in the Philippines, where he met his wife. His compassion knew no borders. When his tour in the Peace Corps ended, he brought his experience and focus on rural community development back to the United States, working in Lexington, Kentucky with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. When he arrived at USAID, initially as a contracting specialist, he served his first overseas post in Jakarta, Indonesia, bringing his young family with him because they were just as committed to this mission as he was. <coughs> his background was in emergency management, and as you can imagine, he therefore was an absolutely critical person and the ideal officer to have on the ground when one of the worst humanitarian tragedies, the devastating tsunami, struck the region. At the time, it was one of the worst natural disasters in recorded history. Dale's experience proved invaluable as he led teams to restore infrastructure, governance, and livelihoods, and quickly meet the needs of massive displaced populations. His work in that moment is a shining reflection on what this country and what this agency is capable of, a reflection of our best values applied around the world, often in its farthest corners, at moments when those values are in their greatest need. 
Separated by generations and continents, both Dale and Eugene shared a passion and commitment for reflecting the best of American values around the world. It's a determination that I know uh, both of their families take great pride in. It's a determination and a commitment that I hope, Carolyn, as your children grow up, they gain a better awareness of and will also uh, take deep pride in. And it gives us the courage to imagine that every day, folks that walk through this hall and see the names on the, on the plaque behind me, and travel out and seek out opportunities to serve, knowing that they're going into places that are risky, uh, where the kinds of services you would have in the United States may not be available. But they take those risks, they make these judgments knowingly, because they care about the mission, they care about this country, they want to be powerful examples to their children and their families. And so today, we're quite privileged to honor them. And every day hereafter, as has been in the past, people will have an opportunity to see their names on this wall, and to be inspired by the commitment and service they offer. Thank you. Dale's wife, Caroline, to give a couple of remarks. Thank you, Administrator Shaw, and thank you, Mr. Zamora, for arranging the rightful recognition of these officers who have died in the line of duty. On behalf of Dale Grever, leaving behind family, countless friends, colleagues, and largely looming before me, his wife, two little girls, aged one and three at the time of his passing. Dale's passion for public service was of a greater sense of mission, leading him from city planning in his home state of Washington to Peace Corps in the Philippines to joining the prestigious ranks as a Presidential Management Fellow paving his way to USAID and the Foreign Service. Becoming a Foreign Service officer was a dream come true, where he felt he could affect the most impoverished and do the most good with his life. And he did, and he had a lot of fun doing it too. <laughs> Dale Grubber improved the lives of thousands in developing countries. From working the reconstruction efforts of the tsunami in Indonesia to advocating anti-corruption practices in Kazakhstan. His work and legacy continues. We must recognize and acknowledge the deep sacrifices foreign service officers make in the line of duty. From the expected, frequent moves, 24-7 on-the-job activity, constant security, separation from family, traffic, and yes, dealing with the topmost of bureaucracy, which I'm sure Administrator Shaw can attest to, to the morbidly unexpected harsh realities faced at post, such as pollution, crime, and a definitive lack of adequate medical facilities, which ultimately led to Dale's downfall. We are overjoyed to have his sacrifices and contributions publicly acknowledged today through this plaque and this ceremony. Our family is deeply grateful, and we continue to support other Foreign Service officers and their families serving abroad. It is lovely to see so many familiar faces here. Very nice. Thank you. Now I'd like to welcome Maureen Sullivan to speak on behalf of her dad.
Well, with Maureen Sullivan Romanoli. <laughs> uh, my name is Maureen, and I'm the daughter of Eugene Sullivan. My dad died 41 years ago in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, of blackwater fever, a deadly form of malaria. I read on the email that was inviting us to the ceremony, way down in the thread, that there was a question, who is this Mr. Sullivan? And I had to laugh because I knew my dad would have found that, that question very funny. But I had to smile because my dad died 41 years ago, and that was decades before personal computers or Facebook or Twitter or the internet. So if you did a Google on my dad today, you wouldn't find out very much information. So I want to take the chance now to tell you a little bit about who he was. My dad worked for USAID all the years that he worked overseas. He was World War II generation, and I think he believed that in order to prevent future world wars, the stronger nations really have to take care of the weaker ones, but not just by sending money and technology, but by going over there, meeting the people, working with them face to face, one on one. And my dad loved being overseas. He loved meeting the people, he loved learning the languages, as they said, he knew 13 languages when he died. And he loved the exotic food, and he loved all learning about the different cultures. But I think to really understand my dad, you have to realize a little bit about his family. There were seven kids in my family. There was me and my six brothers. <laughs> I was third. I had two older brothers, Danny and Mike, and four younger brothers, Jerry, Pat, Jamie, and Chris. Jamie and Chris were both born in Korea, my father's first overseas assignment. Most of my brothers and I were really raised overseas. I went overseas when I was six years old to Seoul, Korea, and we, after five and a half years, we went on to Taiwan, the Philippines, Thailand, and Ethiopia. Now let me give you that, a little different perspective on that. I went to five different grade schools and three different high schools before I graduated from the International School in Bangkok. My dad was a fanatic about education, and as they say, the world was his classroom. But he made it our classroom, too. My parents raised us to be independent and comfortable in the world. They had to. When, they, when we graduated from high school, they had to put us on a plane, send us thousands of miles back to the States alone, not knowing that they weren't going to see us for months and sometimes even years. It took a lot of courage for them, but I think it also showed a great deal of confidence in us and the way they raised us. If I had to choose one image of what my family was like overseas, I would have to say it was the custom-built round dining room table with the lady Susan in the middle. My, my parents used to ship it from post to post, so we always had the table, and all nine of us would fit around it, and we would spend hours talking and laughing every night. My father was, always felt that dinner was a family event, and if he wasn't traveling, we had dinner together. I think also, to give a sense of who my dad was, you need to know what was important to him. And I think there was three things. His religion, his family, and his career. Maybe four things. My dad loved the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> my dad was born and raised in Massachusetts, and he was an avid Boston Red Sox fan. Um, to give you an idea of how much of a fan he was, it wasn't unusual to find him at 2 o'clock in the morning in the bathroom, hunched over a transoceanic radio, listening to the Boston Red Sox games. <laughs> now, when we were went up, came back to the States on home leave, he would take us to the games. And if the Red Sox were losing, and back then they used to lose, unfortunately my dad died 32 years before they ever won the World Series. <laughs> But if they were losing, my brothers and I would sometimes root for the other team. But my dad never did. He was a Boston Red Sox fan through and through. To give you a sense of the kind of man and the kind of father he was, let me tell you one last story. I transferred to Boston University in January of 1971, a year before he died. In June of that year, I sent him a Father's Day card with a gift. Now, I was a poor, college student, I made him a gift. And as a writer, I wrote him a tribute. And it went something like this. Here's to the man who, and then I filled it in with a lot of family memories and anecdotes about him. And to give you an example, um, here's to the man who never lost a passport or a shot record while hurting seven kids through the airports of the world. 
Or here's to the man who could talk his way out of a ticket by showing his foreign service card and kindly explaining to the cop that he was just back from overseas. You get the idea. Anyway, I had forgotten all about this Father's Day gift until a year later when my mother sent it to me. She said they found it in the top drawer of his desk when they cleaned out his office. Not only had he kept it, but he kept it close by. My dad's life and his career gave us a childhood that we would not exchange for anything in the world. Probably the only way to know my dad today is through his legacy. And we are his legacy. His children, his grandchildren, and now his great-grandchildren. He lives on through us. So I hope I've helped explain a little bit of who my father was and maybe explain who is this Mr. Sullivan. Thanks for that, Maureen. Uh, so I'd like to call Dr. Shaw to the stage uh, to present the tiles and place the tiles on the, uh, on the wall. So this concludes our ceremony today, uh, but I'd just like to say in closing, you know, uh, Caroline, you and your family, and clearly the Sullivan family, uh, of which, by the way, I'm a part, I'm a Sullivan, <laughs> on other side, but, you know, this is a public space that you're sitting in right now. This is a sacred space, and this public space is always open to you and your family, and if you ever want to come in here, it's open 24-7. Uh, if you want to come in and just be a part of the wall and a part of your loved ones, it's open to you. So thank you all for coming. Uh, it's been a very memorable day. Thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, this area is available for anyone who wants pictures uh, with the families and the wall. So Francisco said if anybody wants to come up and take pictures by the wall, it's, it's all yours. So thank you all for coming. <laughs>